Hello everybody, this is Brett Darian. I just got back from a trip to the thrift store and there I found a portable cassette recorder. This is an on brand and here's the box for it. It was only five dollars. It features a built-in microphone and one touch recording. Of course we'll find out later that um, this does not really have one touch recording but we'll find more about that later. Features modern design with retractable handle, built-in speaker for convenient playback. And here's the back of the box. It's got some interesting labels on here. I'm not sure what this yellow one is, but this blue one, it says here service fee. So I'm not sure what that indicates. This doesn't seem like something that you would send to get serviced, but you never know. But the most interesting thing though is this one here. This looks like it was a a customer return label, which has been ripped off, but you can still see some remnants of it there. So someone bought this from Walmart and returned it. So we're about to find out probably why. It also included the power adapter for it right here. And it also included the external microphone. So we'll go more into that later. But now we'll look at the cassette player itself. Pretty basic really. Um, there's a lot of these portable cassette recorders and players. They all look pretty much the same. This one's got kind of like a aluminum grill uh, with a speaker cover. And you got your record and battery indicator light. And you got typical keys here, record, play, rewind, fast forward, stop, eject, and pause. Take out my test tape here. We'll play that in a minute. And we got a pause button. On the side here, we got your DC 6 volt input for the power adapter. An auxiliary input. I think it's an input. An earphone output, a remote jack, and a microphone jack, and a volume control. And here's that uh, handle that they were talking about. It's not. It doesn't feel very sturdy though, but I guess it'll like it'll hold the weight. And the batteries go here. I've got a few batteries in there. Those were mine. It didn't come with any batteries, but. Uh, but at least it didn't have any old batteries in it that were leaking. And this is model ONA 13 AV504 on cassette recorder. It takes four C batteries. And I'm pretty sure that's your date code, which indicates this was manufactured in 2018. So it's not that old. And of course, it's made in China. Now one thing that was also in the box was this cassette here that the previous owner actually had recorded some stuff on. So we're actually going to listen to that first because that'll actually tell us what's wrong with this particular player. See the blue light? Look. So if I hold this down, it works. And if I don't hold it down, watch. I'll release it. Hold these down, it works. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. Testing, testing. function to work and it turns out that it's the record button 
so the deal is, is that you have to keep holding down the record button in order for it to record your voice, whether using the built-in microphone or the external microphone, which I am using now. When you're not holding down the record button, then the tape still turns, but it does not record anything. So this could be used as sort of like a record mute feature, but I don't think this is the intended way for this recorder to, well, record. Um, normally you would just press down the record button and it would record. You, uh, you normally wouldn't have to hold it down. So now I will demonstrate what I mean when you press the record button. And now I'm trying to talk into the microphone uh, uh, using the built-in microphone and you're not seeing the blue light light up indicating that it's getting any sound. But now that I am holding down the record button, now you are seeing the blue light light up and now the recording function is now working properly. But once again, when I release it, nothing happens. So now I'm going to hook in the external microphone and we'll try that. So once again, I am talking into the external microphone. And once again, yeah, you are not seeing the blue light light up. But now that I'm holding down the record button, now the light is lighting up so it is now recording properly. I'm not sure exactly what the problem is. My guess would be that the spring on the record button is not tight enough so it makes proper contact. That might be something that can be fixed. We might try opening this up and see if there's anything that, if there's anything simple that's wrong that's just keeping this from being locked down properly all the way. But uh, most likely, it's probably nothing I can do, but there might be something, so we'll see if I can open it up and see what we can see. Before we do that, though, we'll try putting in my stereo test tape. I made this little stereo test so we can see if this actually plays back in stereo or not. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. So that indicates that it's playing back both left and right channels. So this does play back in stereo. It's very hard to get a good shot of this, but there's a look at the mechanism. So it obviously does play back in stereo. And it looks like it has a permanent magnet erase head. And the pinch roller looks in pretty good shape. Again, this isn't a very old player. And so pretty basic stuff, but... It does work, but again, except with the exception of the uh, uh, the recording flaw. Okay, so let's have a peek inside. We got two Phillips head screws here, and underneath the battery cover, we have two more Phillips head screws right there that we'll remove. Okay, all four screws are removed. So let's see if we can just lift up this cover. Okay, that's actually a little different uh, than I was expecting it to look. So these are the uh, the keys. So nothing looks wrong with these. And they just sit in here. And this and those keys push up these tabs here. So that would be the record one. I really don't see anything wrong there. You got a really good view of the whole mechanism here. And this is the speaker. Uh, that looks like, um, yeah, that's an 8 ohm 1 watt speaker. So that's actually not too bad for a, uh, uh, for a portable player like this, though I think that would normally be 4 ohms, not 8 ohms, but still not bad. There doesn't seem to be anything here that I can change. So I guess we'll just put it back together. All right, I put it back together now, and as you can see, the problem still persists. 
where it does not record anything when you don't have the button pushed down but you put some pressure on it and and now the record light does light up and your voice is being recorded but you know when you let it go nothing is recorded so I'm not sure what the problem is there uh, there doesn't seem to be anything that I could do to um, to fix that problem it might have something to do with the mechanism that uh, that the keys push up to activate the record feature something just may not be making contact properly or something or it just may not be getting pushed down hard enough but there were no springs or anything it was just a uh, the keys are just on this rail and when you push it down it pushes up the rod and then it and that's what activates the record function so I'm not sure exactly uh, what's wrong there but either way though I can see that is why that this is why this tape recorder was returned when someone bought it from Walmart I'm assuming the uh, the voice that was on this tape was the original owner and they were trying to figure out why this recorder wasn't recording anything unless you uh, were actually holding down the record button the entire time obviously that's not uh, that's not actually one touch recording um, like the box advertises so there's obviously something wrong there but overall guys that's pretty much it this is a little simple video on this on a cassette recorder with an uh, with a very interesting flaw I must say uh, overall I don't recommend these uh, Pobo cassette recorders at all anyways um, this is really just for like dictation or voice anyway uh, the built-in speaker does distort quite a bit at loud volumes when you listen to music and stuff especially and um, and like while this does have an external microphone which definitely sounds better uh, than the internal microphone um, you know this one in particular has the issue with holding down the record but once again this might just be this particular player the other on players might be fine he might just be this particular player that has that flaw uh, but overall, still not still not very good quality here because, well, the motor, for one thing, is also very noisy. The power adapter can also introduce noise into your recordings. So overall, just not very good. It's not too bad for playing back, like, dictation tapes. Uh, like, if you have any cassette uh, tapes that have, like, voice on them or something this might be okay for that but for actually recording anything or playing back music uh, you probably wouldn't want to use this for that but anyway guys that's it for me for now so uh, thanks for watching this little short video and I will see you in my next video you guys take care